a big week for Japanese assets and the, the Japanese monetary policy landscape. When I think about the meeting this week, there are three main options. You can either loosen the target ceiling on the benchmark 10-year, you can completely abandon the yield curve control policy, or you can do nothing. Of those three scenarios, what do you think is most likely? Uh, I think for this week, uh, doing nothing. Um, Governor Kuroda is very good at surprising the markets. And obviously, it's game on after uh, the move at the previous meeting. But for all intents and purposes, I think the Bank of Japan wanting to see what the effect of a gradual reduction is, um, you know, a gradual normalization. So I think for all intents and purposes, yes, it's the Bank of Japan against the market, but the Bank of Japan is going to surprise by doing nothing. All right, so a an underwhelming surprise, but a surprise nevertheless. Um, as my colleague just highlighted, um, the central bank governor is poised to step down from his role in April after a record 10 years as Bank of Japan governor. What do you think he wants his legacy to be? And to what extent might that be factoring in to his decision about um, these monetary policy decisions over the coming weeks? Look. Uh, Governor Kuroda's legacy is very clear. He is the man who beat Japan's deflation. And remember that here in Japan, we've had deflation, not just for one or two or three years, but for almost three decades. We've seen asset deflation, we've seen wage deflation, and of course, price deflation. And Governor Kuroda has always been very clear. He's going to be stubborn. He's going to fight it. And here we are, over the last six months, it really is becoming very clear that deflation is being bait. Real estate prices here in Tokyo have more than doubled over the last three years. Consumer prices are increasing very nicely. And finally, we're getting evidence that wages for Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe are growing. So it is sayonara deflation here in Japan and Bank of Japan Governor Kuroda has a victory lap. Sayonara deflation <laughs> as, as noted then there. The biggest risks from this then, uh, particularly for the Bank of Japan in your opinion then, Jesper? It's interesting. I don't think that there's risk for the central bank, but for global markets, the big issue is that Japan is the largest creditor country on earth. It is the funding currency. It is the lowest cost with short-term interest rates still being negative or very close to zero. And if and when we're going to see an adjustment in the world's last resort to actually fund your currency, then I think the global ripple effects are actually going to start to come through. And yes, what is the major implication is that the yen is likely to become a very, very strong currency once again. Interesting. All right. So we saw the 10-year beat that 0.5% mark, right, and rise above it. Uh, on Friday, it was pretty much the first time since uh, December 20. Um, how far does that yield then go? I mean, just on last week alone, they've had to shell out around 3.2 trillion yen on fixed rate yep. bond purchases. So the higher it moves could be a little worrisome. No, I don't think that there's any worry, you know. I mean, markets are markets, and the whole point of capitalism is that, uh, you know, there is going to be some winners and there's going to be losers. You ask how high is the yield going to go, I think that in a year's time, the 10-year bond yield will be at around 2% rather than the 0.5 that we've got right now. And the reason is that the Japanese economy is actually growing, is actually accelerating, and that wage growth finally is accelerating. And that's where it's right and proper to actually let the yield go. And there will be many, many winners in that because if the cost of your mortgage or the cost of your uh, credit card bill is going up, that's terrible if your wages are falling. But when your wages are rising, then we're in good shape. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.